Katie yeah. Taylor in Dublin, yeah. in this incredible location, very, yeah. very sort of quaint, quiet, mysterious. Yeah. It's you, like this place is you. <laughs> this is such an honor yeah. for me to be here. Oh, Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Ariel, for being here. Yeah, this is a beautiful house, isn't it? It's uh, away from all the chaos, away from all the noise. It's absolutely perfect. Um, so yeah, I just can't wait for the weekend. It's befitting the queen of oh, Ireland. Yeah. I know you don't like that, but we're <laughs> overlooking the, the yeah. city. I actually want to go take a walk yeah, if you don't absolutely, mind, yeah. and check this out because yeah. this is amazing and talk to you about this fight. Yeah. We're speaking on uh, Thursday morning before <laughs> one of the biggest fights of your life. Yeah. Would you, yeah, I mean, like, honestly, Olympics and MSG, is it fair to say this is the biggest fight of your career? I think so, yeah. This could possibly be the biggest night in my career so far to date. Uh, the best victory in my career so far as well. Um, my first fight at home in Ireland. <laughs> Um, it's amazing to think that um, six years in, in as a professional boxer, um, this is my first fight here at home and you can feel the atmosphere, you can feel the excitement and the, and, and the buzz of everyone here for this fight. It's an undisputed champion versus an undisputed champion as well. You just don't get bigger fights than this, so it's absolutely huge. And I want to ask you about that in a moment, but like this is your city, yeah. right? <laughs> this is it, yeah. Do you, do you allow yourself to take this in? like you? are the most talked about athlete in Ireland. I know you hate when people say that. You're the most beloved athlete in Ireland. I know you hate when people say that, but you are the star of, of, of this country, of this city on Saturday. Everyone is here for you. Do you allow yourself to look over and, and to take it all in, or are you so focused that you block all this out? Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably after the fight, I'll probably take it all in afterwards. But right now, I'm obviously just focused on what I have to do on Saturday. The most important thing is to win the fight on Saturday uh, evening. And my focus is completely on that right now. But it is beautiful scenery for sure. For sure, this is my nation. This is my country here, and um, we are a country who absolutely loves loves our sport. We love our, our boxing, especially, and our fighting. And um, for a very very small nation, we're we're very very good at it as well. So I'm so happy to bring big time boxing back to this nation again, where where it actually belongs. The last time I spoke to you was in January at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. It was uh, right before the Serrano Cruz fight. Yes. And uh, we were talking about this date and that fight, the rematch, like it was a done deal. She hadn't fought yet. Yeah. Um, while you were watching that fight and how bloody and yeah. you know, beaten up she was getting, was there any part of you thinking, is this is this like is this going to be a problem on May 20th were you worried that she was taking too much damage I uh, I wasn't really uh, thinking that I just knew it was a gruesome fight obviously but um uh, I wasn't thinking that the fight was going to be cancelled or the fight was going to be postponed or whatever um obviously you're involved in, b in big fights like that you get, can't get gruesome but I thought I did initially think that I just can't wait for this rematch um so I was obviously very very surprised to hear that the fight was actually uh, postponed or whatever or she pulled out of the fight um, I was training hard for that for that rematch. Uh, I was actually on my way to the gym when I actually heard out that. that oh yeah. Uh, so what was that? Can you tell me what was that like when you got the call? Uh, I was very very disappointed. Obviously, I was so deflated. I I found it even hard to step into the gym that morning. Wow. <laughs> because uh, I was obviously uh, gearing up for this this big rematch. But initially, when we found out Serrano was out, I knew that the next best opponent there was Chantal Cameron, um, to step up and wait and to challenge for her titles and. Um, I just want to, I want the big tests, I want the big challenges and uh, especially for this big home phone, what's the point and, and I, I think we could have picked an easier fight but we wanted to, to have this big mega show and um, this has all the makings to, to, to be another iconic fight. Okay, so I want to ask you about why Chantal in a moment but was there a period there where you thought, alright, Amanda's out, my homecoming is going to have to wait. Mm. Like, were you were you crushed? Were you, were you thinking yeah. that May twentieth would just not happen? Yeah, there was uh, definitely a bit of worry there in my mind. Um, we, it was still up in the air. The fight was uh, May twentieth. Was still up in the air as well, and that's when I sent out that tweet. Yes, <laughs> very unlike you. Yeah. By the way, did you write the tweet? I did actually. Because <laughs> you told me in January you don't really go on yeah, social media. I don't so go. I, like, on, on, I don't go on social media much. So when I do go on, it makes an impact. That's, I mean, unlike <laughs> you to. Yeah craft your own tweet but unlike you to call someone out and I know yeah. you were doing it not like I want to beat you up but <laughs> you were you were planting your flag like you want to stay on this date you want yeah this absolutely the the tree arena was booked for May 20th um we just didn't have an opponent and uh, I, I felt like the uh, the fight was going to be uh, destroyed uh, the date was going to be destroyed so I just had to put that tweet out to see what happens and I was trying to do what I could do to actually make the fight happen and then um, a few days after putting that tweet out here we are <laughs> the fight was made What's crazy about it is, like, you, you know this very well, like, you could have fought me, 
<laughs> on Saturday and sold that place out yeah. in a minute. You could have bought a broomstick and sold that yeah. place out. And I think a lot of people have said the same, like, just, just take the homecoming, take the, the nice, easy yeah. win, have the celebration, have the coronation. <laughs> you arguably took a tougher fight, yeah. higher weight class, mm -hmm. undisputed champ, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, I just absolutely love these challenges, genuinely. Um, I don't see the point of uh, picking any easy fights. I think one thing that has marked my career is I never ever picked the easy fight. I always wanted the biggest challenges and the biggest tests and these kind of fights um, help the sport grow as well. Um, I think female boxing over the last few years has grown so much because of the, the likes of uh, myself and Serrano fighting in, in that epic fight, the fight of the year contender. Um, these big fights, that this is what the sport actually needs. And um, I'm so motivated for a fight like this as well. I think if I was a fight in the, any normal mandatory challenger, um, it's hard to get yourself up for those kind of fights. I think I, I need these sort of challenges and tests. And yeah, people are saying that this could be a bigger challenge than Serrano, and this is exactly what I want. Do you prefer kind of being doubted as opposed to being like a gigantic favorite and everyone's like oh you're just going to steamroll does that kind of motivate you a little yeah. more when people are questioning you i think so yeah i mean i don't take too much notice of what people are saying but um well, the only thing that matters is how i feel about the fight and mm -hmm. what i what i think and i'm obviously stepping to the ring and saturday night very very confident that i'm going to come out with a victory and and so is she um but yeah I, I, it is great to, to have a chance to prove people wrong as well i suppose but um yeah, I guess we'll see what happens on Saturday. <laughs> Being undisputed champion in two weight classes, was that a goal for you or is that just something that materialized here? Um, I guess it was just something that, that materialized. I think if you had asked me at the start of my pro career what I would have liked to, uh, to have achieved, I think uh, the list would look something like becoming undisputed champion, uh, raising the profile of female boxing. Uh, breaking the, the, the pace even for female fighters as well and obviously having a chance to fight here at home in Ireland where, where boxing actually belongs and um, it's amazing that we are actually here when I have a chance to become a two-way undisputed champion in front of my home fans. Um, this is definitely the stuff of dreams. Did it bother you that Croke Park didn't materialize? Um, I definitely would have absolutely you know, loved to have a chance to fight there, a most iconic stadium, 80,000 people. Um, but I'm just happy to be fighting here at home regardless and uh, I'm definitely not giving up the, the hope of uh, actually fighting at Crow Park soon. Speaking of yeah. not giving up hope, did you ever give up hope that you'd be able to fight here? I think a few years ago I, I didn't think this was ever going to happen really? uh, to be quite honest and um, I think it would have been very very disappointing for me um, if I didn't get a chance to actually fight here. Um, imagine like becoming undisputed champion, having all these fights and not having a chance to fight here at home. Yeah. It would have been so heartbreaking for me. Um, it would have felt like a, um unfinished business or whatever in my in my pro career. So here we are. I have a chance to, to fight in front of my home crowd and I hope, hopefully this is uh, the first fight of many. And so when you see other fighters get their great homecomings, right? They're big like hometown fight. We just saw Canelo. Yeah. You, I mean, it's like everyone gets that. And you're arguably the greatest, in my opinion, you are the greatest female boxer of all time mm. and you can't get it so deep into your career. Mm. I know you're not one who likes to compare yourself to other others, but was there a part of you when you saw some of these fights to be like, this isn't right, this isn't yeah. fair, right? Yeah, it was definitely, uh, I was uh, definitely good at times looking at other people who are having their home going fights yeah. of boxing from the big crowds and on a consistent basis. and. Um, all my fights have been either in the UK or America and it's crazy to think that this is my first fight here but um, I'm just grateful really uh, um, that it is happening right now and um, probably in, in, the, in the best fight in boxing right now as well and the best fight in female boxing right now as well as myself and Chantel and it's amazing. I spoke to your mom just moments ago and she used the word surreal. She said this is all very surreal yeah. to have you here because like you're at the shopping center that you know is not too yeah. far from your house and, and and she goes there as well and now you're in the middle doing an open workout yeah. in front of everyone does this feel surreal for you like that it's actually here and that you're in your familiar territory it, it definitely does and um i mean it's just incredible you even seen the amount of people that was there yesterday at the media workout it was it was incredible seeing so many kids there as well young girls there young promising female fighters and that's what it's all about isn't it and uh I just, I, I, I nearly pinched myself that this has actually happened to be quite honest. I'm, I'm so happy, I'm so proud to, to have made this happen and 
Um, yeah, I just uh, I just can't wait to step in there now to feel the atmosphere. I think it's going to be absolutely electric on Saturday evening. I don't know if people outside of Ireland fully appreciate this because, like, when we see a fighter fight at home, it's like, yeah, it's great for them. But this is historic in so many ways because when you were coming up, it was illegal here. Yeah. Like you were dreaming of something that was actually impossible. Yeah. Olympics, impossible. There were no you know, female boxers mm. allowed to compete in the Olympics. Competing in your home country, impossible. And so to come to the point where now, not only the fight is here, but it's like, as you said, young girls are there mm. to get a picture with you, to get in the yeah, ring with you. Yeah. Th th that, that surpasses anything that anyone else has been able to experience over the last 20, 30 years, because when you were dreaming this dream, it was literally impossible yeah. for this to happen. Yeah. That's crazy. It is, it's, uh, it's amazing. And actually when this fight was made, uh, that the home was actually gonna happen, I was actually reminded back of uh, the first time I actually put on a pair of clothes as a nine or 10 year old. and. Just thinking of all the sacrifices, all the obstacles, all the... It was an uphill battle when I started boxing and uh, women's boxing wasn't even allowed in this country at the time. And um, I had to train year in, year out without getting any fights. And my first fight was as a 15 year old, but the first uh, official sanction about, uh, for female fighters. And from then on, it was just, um, it's just been an amazing journey. And here we are, uh, another big female fight headline, a huge show. We're going to be at the center of the boxing world again on Saturday evening. What was it about like that moment when you put the gloves on, when you got to go to the gym? Because your mom also told me that you were a very quiet shocker, very quiet, reserved yeah. young <laughs> child, but this was a great way for you to express yourself in a different way, yeah. to go to the gym. What was it about the connection that you had with the gloves, with the ring, with the gym, that you know really captivated I you? I just absolutely loved the whole, uh, even the whole gym environment here. You're going to the gym, even the noise of the gym, the smell of the gym even. You're, you're listening to the guys pounding the bag, you're listening to the, the, the sound of the punches um, uh, while, while you're watching a few spars, just the skipping rope going around. Um, I just became addicted to the boxing gym really. And um, I just loved the one-on-one -on -one combat as well. I, I was involved in so many different sports growing up, but there is definitely something different about this one-on-one -on -one combat. Um, the grit, the determination, how well do you take it, what do you, do you have right. what it takes, all of that matters. And, um, I just love absolutely everything about about the fight game. And, and that's the amazing thing about you. You were a tremendous football player, soccer player, and you could have gone that path, which I'm not saying is the easier path because it's a very tough sport mm. to succeed in, yeah. um, but it would have been easier for you, right? And yet you chose the one that was illegal. You chose the, <laughs> path, you chose the impossible path. Yeah. Is that just because you're, you know, a stubborn person? Is it because you like to prove people wrong? Um, Why would you take the tougher path? I wouldn't path? say uh, it, it's anything to do with that. I just love the sport. It, this is always my number one passion. And um, uh, I was also surrounded with an amazing family as well who uh, who brought the greatness out of me as well and believed in me. And I, I grew up with big, big dreams and they never ever once said that that's not going to happen. They, mm. I was surrounded by people who just uh, and really genuinely believed in me and, and, and believed in the, in the dream that I had and, and I think that's all obviously very very important to, to be surrounded by people like that. I have the most encouraging and supportive family and it's one of the reason, uh, reasons I'm in this position as well. And so you mentioned that uh, you hope this isn't just a one and done, right? Yeah. I, is it fair to say like rest of your career do you want? Do you want to make up for lost time? Yeah, would that absolutely, be the goal? Absolutely. All I the think fights here for the rest of your career? That would be ideal for me to have all the fight, all the rest of my fights here um, as a pro. Uh, hopefully pro park can happen someday as well. But right. um, yeah, wh why, why go elsewhere when, when we can actually have the fights here? Absolutely, yeah. and, and the, the reception that you get. Um, I was talking to Eddie Hearn yesterday, and I said, how many do you think she has left in her? And um, he said, you know, I would love for her to retire undefeated, maybe one or two, and he said, if, if I tell her that, she'll want to, you know, yeah. I can see the look <laughs> on your face right now. Yeah, he I'm said, actually you curious would, to, to hear yeah. what he actually said. He said, I would love for her to retire undefeated, yeah. maybe get the Serrano rematch after this, and, you know, maybe one more and that's it. He said that you would bite his head off <laughs> if, if you heard him say that, that you would go for another 30 or 40 fights. Yeah, Realistically, well. how many do you have left? Yeah, I definitely don't have 30 or 40 okay. fights, but um, definitely a few more fights for sure. I'm not thinking about retirement right now. I, I, I think I, I feel, I obviously feel very, very fresh and um, I'm still so passionate about the sport. I'm not sick of getting up in the, er in the early mornings yet. I'm not sick of getting punched in the face yet. <laughs> um, all of that stuff matters, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I obviously know that I can't do this forever as well, and a few more fights at least, whatever that is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You still want this round of rematch? 
I think that would be amazing that they get this random rematch here in, in Ireland and um, that there's still a huge ha appetite for that, for that fight. Obviously, it was fight of the year and um, just a, an epic fight. So, um, yeah, if she wants it, obviously, she knows where I am. Is that at stake? Meaning you have to win on Saturday for that to remain a reality? Um, I mean, I, I, I obviously yes. <laughs> am going to win on Saturday. Yes. I, 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 I'm, I'm planning to win on Saturday, but uh, I think regardless, uh, the fight, the fight should happen, the rematch should happen, and um, so yeah, I guess we, we can talk about it after Saturday sure. evening. <laughs> and, and I remember in January when we talked at MSG um, about the walkout, about you soaking it in, about mm -hmm. you looking at the crowd. <clears throat> Are you going to do the same on Saturday? Do you feel like it's, and maybe even longer, are you yeah. going to really allow yourself to enjoy it? I, I think so. I mean, I haven't really thought too much about that. I think those things are kind of spur of the moment type of things. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I do plan to, uh, on soaking it all in. I just uh, feel in the atmosphere of the whole place. Um, 10,000 Irish people screaming for me. It's going to be absolutely insane. Um, my whole family are going to be there. I, all my friends are going to be all going to be there. My childhood friends and wow. um, this is just uh, an amazing moment for, for myself and, and the whole family, really. A lot of people who haven't seen you live yet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, lots of people haven't seen me live yet, and yeah, we're only a few days away. Um, just just to step in there in front of my my Irish fans, this is just amazing. Have you picked the song yet, or are you letting? <laughs> I, I have a few songs of mine, but I, I, I haven't uh, totally picked it yet. But okay. yeah, yeah. That's the big question everyone wants I to know. I know. Still yeah. can't believe that you let yeah. him pick all these years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last couple of songs I've actually sure. picked myself, but um, yeah, at times I'm standing in the hallway to walk out, and I'm not, I don't even know what song's going to be played out. So, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see. One last thing before we wrap up, I uh, stumbled upon this incredible story that I wanted to ask you about. Mm -hmm. um, for the audience at home, if you could tell me, who is uh, Deirdre Gogarty? Oh, Deirdre Gogarty is uh, one of my heroes uh, of the sport. She was um, the only kind of female fighter I, I actually knew of. She was obviously an, an Irish woman. Um, she fought in that famous fight against Christy Martin on the Mike Tyson undercard. and. Just a really, really supportive and uh, encouraging to, to me growing up and always made time for me. Um, she held a pass for me a few times. Uh, she invited me over to her house a couple of times. Wow. And it's just uh, really incredible. Um, she's actually going to be there on Saturday evening to, to, to watch me as well, which is, which is absolutely insane. But when's, um, when's the last time you saw her? Uh, the last time I saw her must have been maybe when I was 15 or 16 years of age. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Do you, do you keep in contact? Yeah, we, we did uh, originally, but you know the way you, yeah, the, uh, yeah. life goes on, and he, you just. Uh, but she's she's always been um, just a huge support to me, and uh, her fight against Christy Martin, um, they were booed going to the ring that day um, because nobody really knew of any female fighters, and but when they were leaving the ring, every every single person gave them a standing ovation, yes. and uh, that's what you call pressure. You know, yeah. this that was such an iconic moment for female boxing. Um, really, really pioneers of the sport, and um, I'm not sure if women's boxing will be where it is right now. If it wasn't for women like like them, it's it's absolutely insane. And so she's actually going to be there on Saturday evening, which is a huge privilege for me to have my my hero right. of the sport. Your hero. Yeah, one of my heroes for sure. And um, just love the fact that she always gave me her time when, when she was home. She. Uh, she gave me so much advice, um, always so encouraging towards me. And she didn't have to do that. She didn't have to make time for me, but she always did. And um, and she's going to be there on Saturday evening, and it's it's incredible. Is it true when you were a young girl, you wrote her a letter one time about yeah. what she meant to you, yeah. and that's how the relationship started? Yeah, um, I, I wrote her a letter after the Christy Martin fight. Wow. She, she responded, and from then on, we um, every time she was home, she. Um, she actually made time for me and um, just an amazing person as well, an amazing fighter. Um, that, that fight, if you actually watch it now, it's like just watching two guys fighting, it, mm. was, it was that good. Um, technically brilliant, had a, showed a lot of heart. Uh, everything that you, that you would see in, 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 in any huge fight, just the heart, the grit, the skill was there. Um, it was just an amazing fight to watch. And um, it's amazing to have such a huge uh, role model to look up, up to as a, as a teenager, a young girl growing up in the sport. Um, yeah, her, her role in boxing just meant so much to me. 
would it be fair to say perhaps if she wasn't doing it, I know she only got to fight here once because the sport yeah. was illegal here. She had to move to the States. Yeah. Without someone like her, and in particular her, there maybe isn't someone for you to look up to and dream yeah. this impossible dream. Yeah, possibly. Um, I, I think she was definitely a, a, um, a big deal to me growing up, and um, she meant so much to me. And uh, just, I just can't believe, looking back at the amount of time that she actually gave me to, to quite on. Yeah. just, uh, um, I remember her holding the pass for me and just get the advice that she was giving me on that day. Um, and here we are, year, many years later, and. Um, I just can't believe that she said she's actually going to be there. It's a huge treat for me. Did you invite her? Or how, how did it happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I wanted her there, and uh, uh, like I said, she is a pioneer of the sport, and um, you know, people give myself so much credit, Clarissa Shields, so much credit. But if it wasn't for those girls, we wouldn't be in this position. Right. Uh, the the, the Leila Ali is the Christian Mars, Deirdre Gorgies, uh, Lucia Rikers, um, and Wolf. These kind of girls. Uh, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be in this position, and um, and she's a fellow Irish woman as well. Right. It's amazing. I, yeah. I can't imagine what it's going to be like when you see her on yeah, Saturday for yeah. the first time since you were 15. Yeah. <coughs> that is unbelievable. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting emotional just yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. Um, one last thing, if I can, before we go. I hear that you have like a ring set up in this yeah. facility. Do you mind showing yeah, it to me? Yeah, absolutely. That would be incredible. Yeah, we can have a few rounds before. I, mean, I, I didn't want to say. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, you know, I've, been, uh, I've been practicing myself. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're back inside. Mm -hmm. I hear you have this incredible ring set up here just for yeah. you. You brought it. Uh, I didn't bring it, but my manager brought it, okay. I guess. <laughs> um, I can't he's going to gonna have to take credit for this. You told me on uh, Saturday that you're looking forward to meeting uh, your idol, who yeah. you looked up to, yeah. right? You Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, since you were 15, since Deirdre Gordon yeah, I can't wait to see her. It's amazing that she's going to be there on Saturday evening. And, you don't have to wait till Saturday. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> I didn't even Here's, see her. Yeah. This is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, it's awesome. amazing. Great oh my gosh. Again. Great to see you, Deirdre. Yeah. Oh my word. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's lovely amazing. surprise. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant yeah. to be here. It's amazing, yeah. Deirdre. Thank you yeah. so much for being here. And yeah. um, I was just telling Ariel how how much of a hero you were to me growing up. Oh, thank yeah. you. Well, I remember you coming to the house yeah, just yeah. a little girl, and you were, you were so quiet, but I could see in you that same kind of, you were yeah. quiet, but like, you yeah. know, they say still water from yeah. the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I could exactly. see that gleam, gleam yeah, in yeah. your eye. <laughs> I know. I was just telling them about uh, your fight with Christy Martin, how uh, that was such an iconic moment in the sport, and yeah. it doesn't, people don't talk about it enough. Uh, I think it was... Uh, one of the, the oh. most special moments in actually in women's boxing history. Um, you were getting booed to the ring that day, but, yeah. uh, but when you left, every yeah, single after person. After about three minutes, yeah, completely yeah, changed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that, that's what you talk, I mean, you talk about pressure. That was pressure right there yeah. for the sport. And um, yeah, incredible. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing because yeah. she was just telling us moments ago how much you mean to her and meant to her and that you took the time yeah. to yeah. hold pads and would invite her to your house. Do you remember getting the letter from her? Yeah, and I put it away very carefully because there was something really special yeah, about that yeah. letter. And I remember thinking, you know, when you said maybe one day they'll let us box in the Olympics mm. and I thought, hmm, <laughs> I'd be pushing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. so now looking back at it, it was, you know, just yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's a, like a piece of history. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, and I, and I remember uh, f how good it made me feel getting a letter from yeah. the young girl. Oh, she's still boxing. Yeah, Great. yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Because I mean, if you hadn't carried it forward, everything I would have done would have been yeah. wasted. So. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You, um, I was just saying, I don't know if I'd be in the position I am that I'm in today if it wasn't for the support uh, from you. From yeah. ever since I was a teenager, you always made time for me. Uh, course, held yeah. a pass for me a couple of times, invited, yeah, me, uh, invited yeah. me to your yeah. house, and that was great. Fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, amazing. So, yeah, this is just a very, very special yes. surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to see, and I'm just wondering for you. I know you didn't get many opportunities to fight in Ireland, unfortunately. Yeah, one, yeah, uh, one, yeah. one and done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always wanted to have another fight in Ireland as a pro. In fact, I wanted to finish my career with a fight in Ireland. 
and uh, it just it was all in negotiate Bo tried really mm -hmm. hard my, my manager yeah yeah it just never panned out yeah. so I'm so happy yeah. you got to it's do amazing this. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. Uh, your spirit is living on through Katie yeah, yeah she's healing my heart <laughs> okay. she really yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. what do you think it will feel like for you to be there on Saturday to watch uh, a woman who looked up to you headline bringing big time uh, it's, it's incredible you know it's incredible it's incredibly satisfying and uh you know, uh, I was inspired by Barry McGuigan and mm. Katie will inspire others and it leaves a great legacy mm. and it keeps building on yeah. itself and building on itself. Yeah, so um, incredible. But it's great to <laughs> yeah. see it now yeah. because it seems like not that long ago it would have been totally impossible. Yeah. So, um, mm. you know, I'm not surprised by it, but I'm still very, very grateful for it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm.